My name is Daniela Ohad and I'm a collector. I'll introduce you to world-renowned experts who will teach us how to improve our eye and how to identify the right piece because everyone can become a collector. Hi, Mark. Hi, Daniela. How are you? Good. It's great to see you. Same here. What a beautiful show. The idea here, really, when you come in, was that the introduction was going to be seen through the eyes of Paul Kasman and through his photographs of their house and the workshop and studio to make it a very personal experience. The inspiration in here was really to create something very naturalistic, to play off of the flora and fauna of Lelan. Francoise Yavel Lelan was a French sculptor who, together with his wife Claude, founded a studio in Uri, France in the 1960s. They forged one of the most prolific art partnerships of their generation and became known as Le Lalan. Their unique vision and original decorative expression attracted sophisticated Parisians, creatives, and a cult of followers captivated by the unparalleled craftsmanship, fantasy, and elegance. Since the year 2000, the scope of admirers and collectors has expanded and become more global than ever before. Lalan's language was rooted in the wild world of animals, which he transformed into surrealist sculptures and imaginative functional objects. Creating a romantic animal kingdom of his own, he turned sheep into whimsical chairs, birds into playful lamps, and monkeys into magical tables. The animal world, he used to say, constitutes the richest and most varied forms on the planet. Decorated Brian McCarthy, a longtime collector of Le La Lan, worked closely with Claude on special oh, yeah. commissions. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now he curates and designs an exhibition at Casmin Gallery, where I visited to learn the secrets of collecting Lalan. So let's take, for example, a lamp, which is called by uh, Francoise Yavert, with Lamp de Table et Chassier. It was made originally in 1990, and it was editioned by Arcoreal. And when you look at the number now, it says 1500. By the way, do you know if the entire edition was produced? It was not. So, do you like the lamp? I love the lamp. For me, it really represents uh, a you know, purely functional as well as sculptural object. I love the combination of materials between the glass and the bronze, the balance of the body with the feathered and head portion of it, all balanced on these tiny little feet, which I think is you know, part of the magic of the piece. So it is the fact that it was produced in an edition does this have an effect on the value of the piece? To me, it doesn't. I, you know, it would be one thing if we were seeing that piece reappear, you know, over the years many times, but it's a piece that you rarely see. And in fact, I've bought some Arcuriel pieces by Francois, by FX, and they're pieces that I've never seen before. So to me, it's really a rarity. So to me, it has no bearing whatsoever. So, so you're not talking about this. We see lately that the prices are getting to real aggressive levels. Do you think that's the top? Not at all. I don't think we've come close to seeing the ceiling on Lalan. Uh, you know, their pieces are so unique and so exceptional. And you look at the world market, it's nothing. So these pieces will continue to come up sporadically over the years. I mean, I can tell you as a collector, I don't ever want to give up any of my Lalan. I, I think there was a struggle early on, too, between what was functional and what was art. They really became the trailblazers, in a way, for sculpture to really become, which was furniture, let's call it, but, but really became functional art. It's redefined and paved the way for so many artists that are working today. You have so many like really 
great pieces here. What's your favorite piece? Oh, without a doubt, my favorite is the owl, uh, which is extraordinary in for a number of reasons. Number one, because it's a piece that I had never seen before. The owl is a major piece for Francois Xavier, and uh, the original was done for Slough Schlumberger back in 1969, and that was done in brass. And then in 1970, he created this image and this model, which is done in bronze. And one of the things that I love about this, which you see in his early work, is the way the pieces were soldered together. So in this case, it's actually cast as a bronze in this, uh, in this way, but the original in brass would have been done in pieces that were then uh, you know, soldered together, hence the, uh, the construction of the actual piece. There are pieces that really resonate with me now that didn't uh, initially, but I think what is also magical about this show is that in Claude and uh, FX's lifetime working together as artists and as a married couple, there were only a few pieces that they did collaboratively. And this table here is a combination of the Francois. Exactly. So you have Francois Xavier on the bottom and you have the water lily leaves on the top. So you really feel the synergy uh, and the soul of the two of them coming together in this one piece, which you know also speaks volumes to what this show is all about now. So they live together, they work together under the same roof yes. for over 40 years. Yes. But they never really created, except for very you know, specific, very few pieces. Exactly. They never really made things together. No. Brian, what a beautiful show, and so inspiring. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Bye, Daniela. Bye. This episode was sponsored by Raygone White specializing in the sale of modern and contemporary art, design, ceramics and glass at auction.